Hi everyone, my name's Mary and I teach yoga for scoliosis and today we're going to do another video on how to breathe well with scoliosis. So if you've not seen my other video about breathing in and out through your nose, then go and take a look at that now because it sets the foundation of what we're going to do today. Today's video is an expansion of that and how to put that into practice um, to create a more functional breath using more of your breathing muscles within your rib cage and your torso. Um, and we're going to use our hands as some proprioceptive feedback. So we're going to be feeling how our body is moving as well. So um, if you want to, we're going to be laying on the floor. So if you want to grab a blanket um, to pop under kind of maybe a shoulder or your lower back if you need that, then go and grab that now. Um, and let's go to the floor. Good, and make ourselves comfortable. So use that blanket. We're going to have our knees bent, with, um, feet nice and wide and knees falling in towards each other. Put that blanket under the lower back if you want to, if it's needed. Or maybe um, if you've got uh, one shoulder that's a little bit higher than the other, then sometimes popping a blanket under your shoulder blade can help as well. All right, so we're going to be breathing in and out through our nose per the last video um, to help us with that diaphragmatic breath. We're going to use our hands. To start off with, we're going to take our hands onto our side ribs. So we're not going to pre be pressing or using any force. We're just going to lightly place them on our lower ribs. Mouth closed. I'm going to take five breaths here and as we breathe, in. We're just going to set the intention and maybe even feel those ribs expanding to the side into our fingers and then exhaling to shrink down. Now that may or may not feel different on each side, that's absolutely fine. If it does feel different on each side, just observe that, take the on as information. Over time, as your diaphragm gets stronger from all that nasal breathing and all the diaphragmatic breath breathing, um, that should start to equal up and feel a little bit stronger anyway. So taking three more breaths here, inhale. Try not to force it, just fingers on the ribs. Set up that feedback, feel how it feels. And five. Good. Then we're going to take our index finger and our middle finger just above our belly buttons. And we're going to breathe in and out to our fingers just above our belly button. So you have to be willing to let your belly button raise up towards the ceiling, surpassing all of that uh, notion of needing to have a flat belly and everything sucked in and tight around that area. I'm going to let it all relax and be free too. Keep trying to breathe in and out through your nose. Four. So we're not pressing down with the fingers, they're just lightly there. And five. Next off, we're just going to lightly place our fingers on our heart center or on our sternum, just in between the nipples. Again, no force. Just alert your brain that your fingertips are on your chest and that you want to gently be breathing around the area. So we're not taking big breaths in to make our fingers raise up and down. What we're doing is our fingers are helping us to breathe around the area and there might be a little raise and lower, that's fine. Nice and subtle, but it's feeling and observing that area, directing the breath to around the area. So breathing into your chest isn't inherently bad. It's just if you're breathing only into your chest and nowhere else on a consistent basis, then you want to be having a look at how you can breathe elsewhere and into your diaphragm. 
but it is important to be able to breathe around this area as well. These are breathing muscles as well. And five. Okay, so we're gonna knit that all together. Obviously we don't have enough hands to do belly button, ribs and heart center. So we're just, we are gonna take our fingertips to above the belly button, then a heel of our hands are just gonna lightly be on, the, on our lower ribs. So we've got two points of sensory feedback and then we can help, we can send our minds towards our heart as well. So breathing into the butt, just above the belly button, side ribs, heart, and exhaling. Two. And no judgment. If there's certain places that aren't moving, that's fine. We're setting the intention and building the awareness around these areas. Giving ourselves permission to breathe into these areas. Three. Four. I'm trying to make that exhale a little bit longer. And five. And just relax there. You can move your hands. If you want to, you're welcome to come up into sitting. So we only did that five times, um, knitting that all together. Um, and that's a great exercise um, to isolate where you're breathing into. So creating more awareness and strength around and movement around those areas. Um, and then ideally, eventually knitting them all together as well, because you don't want to be breathing only into one part and not the other. You want to be using the space of the rib cage. You want to be using the diaphragm. You want to be using the muscles um, in the upper chest and neck to help you to take that deeper breath. Um, and what you can move on to is breathing in for a certain amount of seconds, a certain, certain amount of seconds and breathing out for a certain amount of seconds. Um, I find that um, can really help focus my mind. Um, so I, in all, aim, I would aim for taking about 10 to 20 breaths, depending on how much time you've got longer, if you can. Um, and breathing in for either three or four and then exhaling, making that exhale a little bit longer and breathing out uh, for either five or six. So if you're breathing in for three, breathe out for five. If you're breathing in for four seconds, breathe out, for, try and breathe out for six. You don't want to um, work to, you want to work to what you are capable of doing without straining and holding the breath. So four and six are too much. Take it down to three and five, it's fine. Um, you'll find that you'll be able to increase that over time um, anyway. So make sure you do that in and out through your nose. Take a few minutes in the morning or in the evening to touch base with your breath and where you're breathing into, and that will help build the habit um, for the rest of the day as well. And then you can do it um, you'll start to do it throughout the day and work those breathing muscles, which sets um, the tone for your posture and your uh, mental health as well. Breathing affects everything. Yeah, so see if you can do that practice as much as you can to bring that into more habitual breathing. So that was uh, breathing um, well with scoliosis. If you have any questions, as always, pop them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them. Um, and I hope that helps and I will see you all soon.